How you doing? <laughs> doing fantastic, man. Um, so let me start by saying congrats on this movie. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, the best thing was, uh, I, what I really dig is just how many times people jump in the theater when they're watching. <laughs> so did you ever go to any screenings and like see people, you know, full on just jumping? I did. Um, I was able to see the movie with an audience quite a few times. And if, I feel like every time that I went, there was a different moment where people were jumping at different times, so that's usually a good sign. It just means that the film in general just has some quality jump scares involved. Uh, completely. Mm -hmm. um, switching gears uh, just for a second, I loved The Leftovers. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So how, do people still talk to you about that? Or, yeah. uh, because for me, like, that show was, Damon did such a great job with that. Yeah, I, I still do get stopped uh, and people mention Leftovers. I mean, that was my first, like, job being in the, in the Actors Guild, so that was, like, a huge blessing for me at that time when I got it. And I was able to work with such a big group of talented actors. And Damon has the craziest mind, <laughs> as you can see, with, his, with, with the show that he had. So it was just really cool to just to have that be my first job and get to really find my sea legs with that project. When you, so you, you, that was your first gig. What did you learn on that set that maybe would surprise people or maybe surprise you about like acting? Because that's obviously you know your first time doing that kind of a thing. I think that I was really lucky that when I came on, you know, I'd taken acting courses over the years before that, so I had an idea of what I thought was the way that you work as far as like when you get a job and you get a new character, how to approach it that the director or writer would really like kind of, kind of hold your hand through it. But it was really refreshing and it was kind of, kind of, uh, I guess nerve wracking in a way where I had a conversation with Damon after I'd gotten cast as Michael Murphy and I was asking him all these questions because I had binge watched the first season before I got the job. And I was like, so how does Michael kind of fit into the dynamic between the Garveys and all that? And he was like, Javon, all of this will start to make sense as the scripts come out. I just, the way that you played Michael in the audition room is exactly what I felt was right. So your instincts as this character is what I want to see from you. I'm not going to answer those questions because as you know, the way that each episode came out and the way that show is written, I mean, it just wouldn't serve the actors well, I think, for them to know exactly what was going to happen with these characters. I think there's a way of kind of keeping us on our toes as well, and it kind of plays well for the audience. And getting now jumping into Overlord, uh, you, you get that script, you see what this world is going to be. Yeah. How are you preparing for that role as compared to what you did for Leftovers? I try to approach it the same way, and that's just being as sincere and truthful as possible as the character that I'm playing. I think that... Um, Julius and JJ and the entire creative team, they wanted this film to be based in realism, just so that you can kind of give the audience a, a sense of uh, familiarity until we take the rug and pull it from under them and introduce all of the sci-fi elements. So as far as how to play boys, I kind of just did my research and watched a lot of documentaries and a lot of films that were based on this time, you know, the Saber Private Ryans and the Banner Brothers and all of that, just to be familiar with that time of war and what young soldiers were going through. And then I think that really helped me and the other actors really kind of give honest performances and it only served well when it was time to add in all the crazy stuff. I'm always curious about memorable moments from filming. Like, what's a day or two that you will always remember from filming? Oh man, probably uh, the last day of boot camp which was a little under a week long and we, just going off of a lack of sleep and doing a lot of training, learning how to use all the weapons and the equipment and the terminology that the military was using at that time. And the very last day, uh, our military advisor, Freddie, had told us that Julius was gonna come down to kind of give us this final evaluation based off everything that we learned, uh, why it was going to have to be for it. So he's gonna have to get us through like a live exercise with you know, the dummy rounds for the weapons and everything like that. And they would evaluate us. And so we were training all day, preparing for this moment. It's like the sun starting to set, it's getting into nighttime and Julius shows up with like this huge cooler, cooler full of beer and like all of our favorite snacks and stuff like that. And it just ended up being like, just like a bro, like a frat boy night out in the middle of the woods. And it was awesome because everybody got like really, just really drunk and just had a really good time. And it was just cool. And it was a great way to end a really tough boot camp. It was a great way to end it. Uh, I love the opening of this movie. Uh, when you're on the plane, oh, you're getting yeah. ready to dive in. It's super intense. I'm curious what it was like filming that sequence, and was it, is, was it, did it have like a serious energy on set when you're trying to capture something like that, or was it like a lot of joking around? Uh, I think the joking was used as a device to keep everybody high in spirits because filming that was really difficult. I don't know if you know, but like outside of all of the stuff in the plane, 
all that stuff was CGI, but everything that happened in the plane was practical. They had an actual C-47 um, remade and it was put on this hydraulic rig. And so every time the plane dipped or, or shifted or shook or anything like that, it was actually happening. And you got 30 guys who aren't all small, we're all kind of packed into this, into this thing and it's suspended in the air. And all the sparks, all the flames, everything that's coming out, those are real. So as guys are tumbling out, they're having to be covered in you know, petroleum jelly so they're not burning. And everything that we're doing in that scene is choreographed and if it's not done right, somebody could get hurt. So because of that, everybody has to be completely aware and just prepared and know exactly where they need to be. So that brings about stress. So the jokes were kind of just to keep everybody in a good mood because after six hours of doing that for like a week long, which is how long that exchange was, people can get really you know, amped and kind of wired up and kind of snap. So. We got through it and the final result was great, but yeah, <laughs> shooting it was, was an exercise for sure. Uh, when you were reading the script, you're getting ready to make the movie. Mm -hmm. Was that the sequence or which sequence were you reading on the page like, oh shit, this is gonna be a tough one? It was between that one and the one um, that happened in the, in the field, like the, with, the, with the mine. I think the mine field was like another one that I read and I was like, hmm, I wonder how that's gonna happen. And then when we filmed it, it was like, oh shit, this is insane. As I remember, me and Jonathan Magaro, who plays <laughs> Jonathan, John Magaro, who plays Tibbet, we got hay fever really bad the day before we shot that scene. So I was like sick, sick. I don't know if you've ever seen Hitch, but like when Will Smith's face like blew up and he had to take all that cough medicine, that's exactly what I looked like. It was terrifying. I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> but when it was, you know, I took my medicine, came back the next day and we shot that scene. And it was like the explosions that they used for that was just so intense and it was all real, so it was really easy to <laughs> kind of fall into the, the atmosphere and the truth of what the character was going through because the effects were loud and it was smoke everywhere and dirt and it was just, but it was fun. It was like getting to play, you're starring in your own video game, so it was really cool. Yeah, uh, completely, it's your, you're six years old again. Exactly. Except it's all real. <laughs> right. Uh, before I run out of time with you, I uh, really enjoyed Jack Ryan season one, and I'm, I believe you're in season two. Yes. Uh, can you tease anything, or what can you say about the second season? Um, I know that it's it was incredibly difficult to shoot. We were in Columbia for three months, and it's really intense. I, I was a fan of the first season as well, and uh, just coming in and getting to play Marcus, who's, who, who I'm playing, is a former uh, SEAL, and uh, getting to play him and kind of interact with, with Jack and the other guys in the show, it, it was a lot of fun. So I think when it comes out, I think people will really enjoy it, and it'll further you know, push the uh, the events of the first season and kind of really challenge challenge audiences for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm also curious, like, what were the scripts like? When you're reading those things, are you like, oh, like, I, what's your reaction when you first started reading those? I was excited, man. I was like, man, these, these guys are so badass, man. Everything that they do every episode is just, it's really intense. And, and these guys are some of the toughest guys on the planet. So it was cool to kind of just get to play a character that stands with them. And he goes through his own little, uh, journey in, in the season, but it's cool that throughout the season he kind of has moments with, with Jack Ryan and, and, and the rest of the, guy, the gang as well. So Jumping into something a little more serious, yeah. uh, you also, I mean, you, it's pretty crazy how many projects you're jumping through, <laughs> but you're also did Central Park, yeah, absolutely, but Central Park 5, yes, um, which is another thing I cannot wait to see. Um, what was it like making that, and are you still making it? Uh, we finished in November. Uh, they started in August, but I had to finish Jack Ryan, and I just flew from Columbia straight to New York. And uh, yeah, that was, tough. That, was, that was tough, man. That was quite a exchange of months right there. But, uh, but Ava, I mean, these type of projects, I think she really excels at. She excels at everything. But these are the type of projects that she really like can sink her teeth into and she gets excited about. So it was a big cast, so that can be really intimidating in itself. But, I mean, everybody was really warm, and everybody knew that they were there to do a job and to be as truthful and really represent these people who are real people the best that they could. And I think that everyone did that really well and they did it with grace and they did it uh, with, with confidence. So I'm excited to see the, the end result. I think it comes out sometime this year. So I know she's working on it crazily right now. So <laughs> she's really? doing her thing. Is it one of those things where you, when you're reading the scripts as an audience, you're gonna be frustrated that these things are happening to I, these people? I think so. Cause I think there are still a lot of people who don't know about it. So this will be an eye opener for a lot of people especially for a lot of the, uh, the people in this story that are, are still alive and well and are living and, and you know, trying to recover from that moment still. So I think it'll be quite an experience when it does come out and I'm excited to see the, uh, the reception of it. 
my last thing because I gotta go. Oh, now that you've done about 16 projects in the last <laughs> year, uh, what's coming up for you next? Just looking for the next thing. Uh, I have the second season of, of Sorry for Your Loss, the show that I did with Elizabeth Olsen. Um, that we will start that later this year, I think, maybe like midsummer, something like that. And uh, just looking for more projects that are exciting, man. There's a lot of material out there, and it's a great time for original content. So I'm just I'm looking for the next thing that, that really excites me and just try to get better with each job.